In this video, I wanna show you how to properly make a battery pack using recycled dead laptop batteries. Well, recycled cells from dead laptop batteries. All right, step one, you gotta, well, crack open the dead laptop batteries. After that, you gotta test the batteries. All right, you put it in here and then you check the capacity, right? This one is at 2300 uh, milliamp hours. What you do is you write the capacity here and then you put it in a box, right? Sort of like these guys. These guys are already tested. They have the capacity in there. After you do that, then you assemble your packs. I'm building a 24 volt pack that which means that it's gonna be seven S, seven cells in series. Uh, and I'm gonna do five in parallel, right? So it takes a total of 35 cells. So I have 35 cells here. They're all slightly, uh, they're actually, these are quite variant between 1400 milliamp hours and 1600, almost 1700 milliamp hours, right? So 35, cells now how do you assemble all these cells do you just put them all randomly here no because then you're gonna end up with groups that are differently sized in capacity and it's gonna be all kinds of problems you're gonna need that bms and it's gonna work that bms really hard and you're just gonna just generally run into problems right so what you do is you find a way to do match cell groups there's a couple of ways but the easiest one is to go to a website that someone made called repacker.com. Check the link in the description and here's what you do. All right, here's the website, repacker.com. Um, you put your pack options, right? Number of cells in series. In this case, 24 volts is gonna take seven uh, cells in series. Number of cells in parallel, they're gonna be five cells in parallel. And then what you do is you take all your cells, right? Here's the first one. This one is, uh, okay, so this one right here is 1408. So you write that right here. 1408, and then you put a comma. You go to the next cell, right? And this is 1484. 1484, and so on and so on. Okay, now after you put all of the uh, capacities, right, separated by commas, then you can choose arrange cells into packs so each have similar capacity and same number of cells in parallel, right? That's what we want to do because you want to keep this pack physically, you know, the same, you know, five cells in parallel, uh, seven uh, groups in series. Uh, but you could also do it differently. You could also arrange cells into packs for so each have similar capacity but vary the number of cells in parallel and keep cells in a pack roughly the same capacity. So if you have, uh, if you don't mind having differently, you know, numbered groups, then you can do that too. All right. Once we have done that, then you just click on the blue button here where it says generate, oh, wait a minute, what's it saying? You only have 33 cells, you need at least 35 cells to generate that pack. Huh. All right, I found the error. Sometimes you forget to put the comma and it thinks that's one cell, that's why it was short, even though all the numbers are there. So when you're doing this, if you paid attention and held every cell in your hand before writing it here, then most likely that's going to be the reason that it's missing a comma uh, and not that you forgot one cell. So once you do that, generate the pack, boom, there it is. And now, and now it tells you the packs, right? Each pack is going to be 7,740. Uh, milliamp hours, right? The next one is going to be 7,759. 
there's a divergence of six, uh, is it six or deviation of 135. So they're all a slightly different. All right, so this program mathematically went and checked out the cells and then regrouped them together so that they all have this uh, as closely match uh, groups as it can. So, right, 7740, uh, group one, 7759, slightly different, right? 7746, 7857. So that one is, you know, 92. The divergence is 92 milliamp hours. Wow, so it's quite a bit. 7756, 7727, 7764. But that's what we get with the cells that we have. You can ch chain cells so you can try and get those groups, uh, you know, closer together or you can just put it together. In my case, because I'm pressed for time, we're just gonna do it as we are. So let's put this battery pack together. All right, I'm, I'm gonna use the standard uh, cell holders, right? These are the ones that are uh, five across and four or Five and five, no, four and five, gonna be two. I'm gonna leave one row unpopulated. So group number one is 1695. So you gotta find the cell that is 1695, where are you? So this is the part of the process that's a little bit tedious because you gotta go and find the right cells, right? So that's cell number one. 1693 on groups, on the group two. 1693, boom. 1475. 1469 all right now we have the pack here right 7s uh, 5p um, these uh, I drilled some holes in here and I put some uh, small zip ties to be able to keep these two plates without spreading too much now what we're gonna do is gonna use our brass 0.41 millimeter by 6.35 millimeter brass strips. What you do is cut it like this. And you guys know my method. I like using the little uh, watt resistors, or no, not quarter watt. They're eight. 8 watt resistors and all you do is you use the leg you put it in here you solder it the solder melts All right, so here we go. I just finished uh, building this pack. As you will see, this is the first pack that I built that has a BMS, right? Um, I left this row because uh, it's a 7S instead of an 8, and I didn't want to cut those and stuff, so I figured I'd, I'd use it as a protection here. Um, and so it's one of those BMSs that, that goes, the negative goes through it, and then each one of these goes on the um, balance lead. So this is, a, I believe this is a balancing board, and it's supposed to measure and have certain criteria where it disconnects the MOSFETs here, uh, and it disconnects the battery, the negatives, uh, the, the battery's negative. Um, if it goes over voltage, any of the cell groups or under any of the cell groups goes under voltage. So I'm going to charge this for the first time. And so in order to do that, I'm going to, um, just temporarily solder this, uh, this connector here so I can, so I can do it, um, with my balancing charger over there, my RC charger, right? Cause, uh, I should be able to just dump a bunch of, you know, 25 volts in here and the, the BMS is supposed to balance the cells here but well it's the first time i figured we'd do it you know while we're looking at it and stuff uh under supervision just to see that this board is good because they're you know that's the problem that has 
been in the past is that you know BMS boards are cheap. I mean they're cheap quality, so they they fail often, and more often than not, they're <laughs> the source of batteries going bad. Uh, so they cause damage instead of keeping damage from cells. They do the, the the they fail at doing the one job that they were designed to do, and so because that's been the case, I figure we just charge this battery for the first time. We balance charge it with our charger over there. So I'm gonna just uh, solder these in here. Let's get going. <laughs>